consuming the world's largest rainforest. The Amazon basin is burning at a record rate, according to Brazil's research center. More than 72,000 fires have scorched the country this year, an over 80% increase compared to the same period in 2018. Flames destroying one and a half football fields of rainforest every minute of every day. Smoke spreading across nearly half of Brazil, visible from space more than a week ago, even spilling into neighboring Peru, Bolivia, and Paraguay. Now the haze stretches across South America, spreading along the East Atlantic coast. Though fires are common here in Brazil's dry season, climate scientists say this is far from the norm. Instead, environmentalists point to land raised at unprecedented levels as a new government encourages industry to develop the Amazon region. Brazil's right-wing president has brushed off environmental concerns as he bows to open the rainforest to business interests. Since he took office in January, rates of deforestation have soared as Jair Bolsonaro remains indignant to international criticism. Take your money and reforest Germany. Bolsonaro bristled at Germany and Norway's decision to suspend funding to Brazil. Now, as attention turns to wildfires surging at unprecedented rates, Bolsonaro is deflecting blame. Without evidence, he points to non-governmental organizations. Regarding the fires in the Amazon, I am under the impression that it could have been set by the NGOs because they had asked for money. What was their intention? To bring about problems for Brazil? Home to hundreds of indigenous tribes, the Amazon rainforest is rich in wildlife and natural resources. Often called the lungs of the earth, the rainforest supplies 20% of the world's oxygen. If it burns to a point of no return, environmentalists warn it could turn into a dry savanna and begin emitting carbon instead, plunging the planet ever deeper into a climate change crisis. And well, that might not be imminent. That might not be imminent, Robin. Uh, but the fact that we're seeing this really flippant response from Bolsonaro and his administration, uh, who claim that NGOs are often fronts for foreign governments trying to take control of the Amazon, there's a very real question about whether or not they're addressing the cause of these fires and, of course, the long-term impact, Robin. Yeah, and this is not a domestic issue. I mean, this impacts the globe, uh, all of us. It's about 20% of the planet's oxygen. So we all have a stake in what is happening there on the ground. So my next question would be, are there any political consequences or any political pressure that can be brought to bear on this government? Uh, it does Mr. Bolsonaro feel like he can, he can okay this for the next few years? And what will be the consequence? I think that's a really good question, Robin, because he does not take environmentalists seriously and he doesn't take environmental concerns seriously. What speaks big here is money, of course. And uh, the Brazil, as part of the Mercosur trade bloc, just signed a big trade deal with uh, the European Union, which is now concerned about what's going on in the Amazon. And we could see that actually having a, a, putting more pressure on Bolsonaro to, to have some more environmental friendly policies than any environmentalist could. Just to uh, give you an idea, um, different leaders are saying that, the, that the, they should actually pull out of the deal, that certain aspects of it uh, shouldn't be signed off on. And we saw Germany and Norway uh, pulling $70 million out of Brazil's Amazon fund. And while that was destined uh, for the environment, if that starts playing out in them not buying Brazilian goods, especially their farm goods, which often come from the northern Amazon region, whether it's soybeans or cattle, that could really have more of an effect than anything else, Robin. Okay, so you, what you're saying, there needs to be a concerted global, collective global response to this. Uh, Shasta Darlington, great to have you. Good to see you, my friend. Live there from Sao Paulo in Brazil. Thank you for that update. So let's go to Chad Myers now. He joins us from the World Weather Center. Hey, Chad. This, as I said, is not an act of God. It is a man-made disaster. Put it in perspective for us. 
it's dry season. Mm -hmm. This is burning season, but the number of fires and the number of hot spots I will show you on a thermal imager here in a second is alarming. Now we know there's been smoke in the air and that's just what you see this time of year. It is the driest part of the year for them, but they have a state of emergency. Most of these fires are human induced, not really thunderstorms because there aren't any this time of year and the fire season goes from July through October. So we're just really in the beginning or the start of fire season itself. Some of these fires you can see from space. You can actually see the smoke. But what we're really watching are those hot spots. We call them anomalies. About 74,000 fires so far this year. That's 85% more than this time last year. Fire dating all the way back. We have, we have a bush in front of me. I can see it here. Otherwise, Brazil here. These are the August 20th of 2019 fires. These are all the hot spots that we see across the globe right now. And this is focused on Brazil proper. Even some fires down around Uruguay as well and Paraguay. And the Amazonas already putting out in this area, already putting out more CO2, carbon dioxide, because of the burning than any year so far since we've been keeping records back to about 2003. And there's the bottom of the rainfall curve somewhere in August and September going back up a little bit later than that. So the Amazon fires, obviously, in our picture. This is what I was talking about here a little bit ago. These are the anomalies. This is what, if you take a look at the surface of the Earth and you t the temperature from one side one of the pixels to the other pixel if there's more weather more hot then you're going to see these little red dots here is august 19th 2019 so just a couple of days ago i'm going to take you to 2018 less fires 2017 still fires not as many and not as concentrated more widespread 2015 2014 we can go back and back as back as long as you want. Now, there were still fires in 14, but look at what it was in 2013. The number of dots is significantly more than it has been for a very long time. We, we know that's what's happening on the ground there.